I would like to be very precise and go to the point. Tell me as precisely and concisely as possible the essence of your teachings. If it has changed from 1970 when I sat opposite you. The first thing you have to remember to be precise if you want me to be precise. <laughs> This is unfair. <laughs> I beg your pardon, it is not yeah. my intention at all to be unfair. I no, have... then it will not be my intention too. <laughs> okay. Never again be imprecise. Okay. Just be precise and to the point. I apologize uh, and I was made a little nervous because uh, of all this section, I was. I understand. Supposed, I In nervousness, when it starts yeah. speaking, that I understand. I also want to say. I also want to say that I have come here not so much in first line as a journalist, but as a countryman, as an admirer, as a well-wisher. I who know. Has read a lot of your books. I know, and I can see in your eyes love, immense respect. One thing, everything has changed since your first interview. To me, life is a permanent change. Only change is unchanging. Everything else changes. If you are alive, you will change. If you are dead, of course, you cannot change. The moment you stop changing, you have died. Many people die near about 30 years of their age. Then they may live 50 years more, but that is posthumous life. I will live to the very last breath. So I will go on changing. I will go on growing. There is no limit to it. There may be a limit to the sky, but there is no limit to the consciousness. Secondly, you want, what is my teaching? It is very simple. The essential core of my teaching is no belief, no dogma, no creed, no religion, nothing borrowed. But only that which you have experienced has to be trusted. Everything else has to be doubted. Just as other religions have their foundation in belief, I have my foundation in doubt. My foundation is exactly what the foundation science has. Doubt until you find something indubitable. Science moves outwards, I move inwards. This inward movement I call meditation. You have to take three simple steps for this inward movement.
and the fourth happens on its own akar. The first step is observing all your activities, that is your body and its acts, walking, chopping wood, drying water from the well. Remain a witness. Don't do it like a robot. May I interrupt you? No. No interruption. Second, when you have become capable of watching and witnessing your body and its activities, then you can take the second step. Watch the activities of your mind, thoughts, dreams, imagination. Just remain a witness, as if you are standing by the side of the road and a procession of thoughts is passing on the road. You are not part of it. You are just a mirror reflecting without any judgment, because mirror has no judgment. A beautiful face, the mirror does not say great. A ugly face, the mirror does not say, my God. The mirror simply reflects whatsoever comes before it. Exactly one has to become a pure witness, without any judgment, evaluation, good, bad. Then a strange experience happens. As your witnessing grows, thoughts start lessening. In the same proportion, if you have ten percent to witnessing, then there are ninety percent thoughts. If you have ninety percent of consciousness, awareness, then there are only ten percent thoughts. Hundred percent witness, and there is just pure nothingness. And this is the state of no mind. This is the door to the third and the last step. Now watch subtle emotions, moods. Thoughts are not so subtle. Moods. A certain shadow of sadness, a certain joy. One is concerned with the body, the second with the mind, third with the heart. And when you become capable of watching the third two, the fourth happens on its own accord. Suddenly a quantum leap, and you are standing exactly at the very center of your being, where there is nothing to be aware of. Awareness is aware of itself. Consciousness is 
conscious of itself. And this is the moment of ultimate ecstasy, samadhi, enlightenment, or whatever name one prefers to give it. But this is the ultimate. There is nothing above it. There is no way to go beyond it. Because wherever you go beyond it, you will still be a witness. If you start witnessing the witness, you have not gone above it. You are still a witness. So witness is the very end of the inner journey. You have come home. And this is my whole teaching. It is absolutely scientific. It needs no belief. It needs only experimentation. And I don't ask anybody to trust me. I ask only to experiment and experience. I know that it will happen to you because it has happened to me and I am just as ordinary a human being as you are. I don't claim to be a prophet or a saviour or an incarnation of God. I don't claim any speciality. I am just exactly like you. The only difference is you are is, is still asleep and I am awake. It is only a question, soon or, or later, you will be awake too. So there is no need to worship me, there is no need to adore me. If you really love me, that's enough for you to move into the experiment. I will extend a guarantee that it happens. I will be your encouragement, but I will not be your saviour. I will not take the responsibility I will do my best to seek you and wake you up.